स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Welcome students and today's class we are going to talk about uh, the wave equation in a higher dimension right so wave equation wave equation so essentially we want to find out a formula for a wave equation right so um, let me write down the problem we as we are supposing to so let n is greater than 2 and m is greater than 2 okay so we have two numbers m and n which are all greater than equal to and the function u is in cm clear of rn cross close zero infinity so you have a function u which is m times infinitely differentiable sorry not infinitely differentiable m times continuously differentiable okay so this solves the initial value problem what is the initial value problem u t t minus laplacian of u this is zero in R n cross zero infinity, clear. U is equals to g, and u t is equals to h on R n cross t equals to zero, clear. Why it is called initial value problem? Because I do not have any uh, you know um, information on the boundary or anything. I just know that initially at the point t equals to zero, what u and u with respect to t does. What is our m? Our m is to find the formula. Okay. So let us assume that if there is a u which solves this problem, let's call this problem as the one. okay if there is a u which solves this problem our aim is to find an so find an explicit formula explicit formula okay for u u in terms of in terms of g and h clear so i have to find an explicit formula just like we did in d'alembert's uh, i mean type kind of formula you remember d'alembert right but that is for n equals to 1 clear the one dimensional wave equation here this is an n dimensional wave equation okay to do that what we are going to do is see we are going to uh, i mean somehow utilize d'alembert's okay Uh, but uh, that will be um, come later first what we are going to do is somehow reduce this one to uh, more or less you know um, how can i put it uh, like a one um, you know for for i mean here the wave equation is a little complicated thing for an odd uh, dimension n so n here this n this is the dimension right so for odd dimension what we are going to do um, is we want to we will show that uh, we will did you something called a euler poisson darbu equation okay and that equation um, i mean in the odd uh, dimension we can convert it to one dimensional wave equation clear okay and then we'll see how to deal with even dimension clear so what we are trying to do here is this see first thing first we want to define a new function using this small u want to define a new function okay so um, the plan is something like this you see um, using small u okay we define a new function we define a new function okay okay and uh, that function we satisfy some particular equation which we are going to call a euler um, poisson darbu equation okay 
equation, right? Now, this Euler Poisson Darbo equation, we can show that this can be converted into a 1D wave equation, clear equation for n odd. So, let's say n equals to 3 or 5, we can do that. Now, once we do, after the, do we do that odd, uh, from there, uh, via a trick, we'll uh, look at it. We'll, we'll solve the um, wave equation. So, basically, the n equals to even case, clear? n equals to even case, okay? So, let us uh, write, the, I mean, try to do that. So, what the idea is this, see, the idea is to study the average, okay? So, basically, we'll define something like this. So, let me define, define for a fix x in Rn, okay, you fix a x in Rn, T positive, R positive, okay, you define, you define capital U of x, R, comma T, this is defined as the average, see U is given to us, right? I mean, I am I am assuming that we have a U and I want to write U in terms of F and H. Is it clear? Okay, so I am going to use small u. Small u is given to us. Huh? So, capital U I am defining. This is XR U of YT. Okay, DS of Y. So, let me clarify what I meant by all of this. What I meant is, I am basically looking at the average of u okay so basically how am i defining the function see the function here the here x is not moving right it's kind of a fixed x so once you fix a x in rn so you, you fix a x in rn so basically your domain will look like this no uh, in one dimension let's just assume how it looks like let's say that that's your t variable and that's your x variable in one dimension you fix a x okay and then you look at, uh, I mean, and, uh, um, you know, a ball with center x, I mean, you know, the boundary of a ball with center x and radius r, okay. So, you look at a ball, something like this, okay. Yeah, of course, it does not, should not uh, contain, uh, so, something like this. Huh? You look at u for that fixed t, okay, for a fixed t. See, essentially what is happening in, is this, for one fixed uh, t, x and r, you define it like this. So, you define a u which, you, which will be the average of u over that uh, sphere, okay. Now, what happens is when you uh, change r and t, so basically now if you define it like this, it will, you can think of this as a function of r and t. Given a x, you can think of this as a function of r and t. So, if you change t, you see, uh, this will change because you will change and then the average will change, right? And of course, uh, with r also, this will change, clear? Yeah? So, for one fix, so basically what we are doing, we are fixing a x and for that, we have two variable function. One is a fu function of r, one is a function of t clear something like this okay so we are fixing a x in rn please let me again emphasize here this is very important for you to understand what i'm doing i am defining a new function function of r and function of t how this small u i already know right so u i am writing it um, as an average okay so capital u is the average of small u over the sphere del b yes I mean, and now you can think of this uh, for a given x, right? So, you see, this will be a function of r and t, right? Of course, because when you change, see, if x is fixed, when you change r, this changes because, you know, the, uh, the radius changes. So, basically, the function, the average will change, okay? Uh, or, uh, I mean, it depends on the uh, radius, that's all. I mean, it may, may not change. And uh, the same goes for t also, right? Okay? So, what is it? Uh, so, basically, this is the average, average of u, t, okay, um, this, uh, this is a for a fixed x over the sphere del p, 
xr clear so th this should be very clear for a fixed text i am defining the average okay with the, i mean using the small u i am defining a new function capital u using a small u okay and similarly i can also define similarly okay uh, of course i will define g of xr which is the average of small g y ds y here this is a function of r only because you know there is no t it's basically t equals to 0 in this case and h of xr equals to average of del b xr okay h of y ds y clear so g and h looks like this now um, so you understand that for a fixed x we regard capital u as a function of r and t okay and once you do that you you find a new formula the for, for, i mean equation huh? so equation which u satisfies okay so basically uh, the, the let me write down this is a theorem the theorem this theorem is called the euler poisson darbu darbu equation okay what it says it said that you fix a sorry fix a x in rn okay fix a x in rn and let u okay it satisfies satisfy u t t minus laplacian of u this is equals to 0 in r n cross 0 infinity okay and u is g u t is h on the base on r n cross t equals to 0 clear so if you have a for a fixed x and the um, i mean you fix a x and you let that u satisfies this equation clear if it does then then capital u if you define capital u so essentially let's call this thing as two okay one i already wrote I, there was no need of writing so capital u okay so then capital u okay defined by 2 belongs to belongs to as i told you it's for a fixed x yes so the capital u which is the average of small u over the ball del b xr over the sorry the sphere del b xr okay that belongs to cm clear cm m at times differentiable of r c okay uh, what sort of function is capital u see capital u for a fixed x is function of r and t r varies between 0 because r is a radius kind of thing right so it varies between 0 and infinity and t varies between close 0 infinity okay so uh, this is in r plus the bar of that so 0 infinity times 0 infinity clear okay and and it solves this equation see once so capital u belongs to cm so this is m times differentiable function of course why this is m i am saying because this u okay this u if you remember we have assumed that this u is in cm okay this is very important see since that capital small u is in cm that you know regularity is getting carried forward here in capital u also and what you can do is you have capital u of t t minus capital u of r r minus n minus 1 by r u r this is 0 clear so that is in r plus cross 
zero infinity okay and capital u is equals to g capital u with respect to t is equals to h on r plus times t equals to zero so uh, see a beautiful thing is happening here what we are doing here so this method is called i mean i forgot to tell you uh, this thing so this method uh, what we are going to do this is called the spherical means so basically you know we are kind of taking a uh, average of our spheres okay so see this function to which you have defined uh, which we defined it like this there is a very beautiful thing about this function u solves the wave equation that's for sure that is given to us right and what we are doing saying is this the average of u if you are taking which you are defining it as capital u that capital u also satisfies a very similar thing it's a wave equation right if you if you look at it properly you see what is this part capital u r r minus n minus 1 by r u r if you recall that is basically the radial part of the laplacian we did this thing yes when we started so note so note u r r minus n minus 1 by r u r represents the what does it represent it represents the radial part of laplacian okay not part this is the radial form of laplacian let me put it this way radial form of laplacian okay uh, if you remember a Laplacian equation when we studied the fundamental solution what did we do we were trying to look for a radial uh, function we satisfy the equation and then we got something like this clear so it is that part so essentially this is a kind of a radial form radial with respect to x utt minus Laplacian u equals to 0 capital U of course okay and this part is the radial part of Laplacian okay so it is in this sense so essentially this is kind of a wave equation okay so this equation uh, let's call it 1 2 3 okay so 1 2 3 this equation let's call it a b so 3 is called I am not writing all the time you guys already understood this is this huh? It's called a Euler Poisson Darbu equation. Okay, Euler Poisson Darbu equation, EPD equation. Okay, right. So this is after three French mathematician, Euler Poisson and Darbu. Okay. So let let us proceed with the proof of the theorem. So the wave equation is extremely, you know. So before I proceed with the proof of this theorem, let me tell you a small thing without writing anything. Okay, please just listen to this part. Uh, Laplace equation, as I already told you, Laplace and heat equations are kind of you know very similar kind of behavior. Yeah, they are they are uh, very much related. Wave equation has a totally different, very independent kind of. They are not doing, wave equation is not like uh, you know the others. Yes, and. Uh, I mean, it, although it looks very much like a uh, Laplace equation, wave equations are very difficult in general to study. Not wave equation, essentially any hyperbolic equation is very difficult to study. Clear? So, um, for that we are going to do all this. So, you do realize that I am in the sphere, I am in the, I mean, we are only doing the homogeneous part right now. Okay? And that is why we have to do so many things. More will come. Okay? But that is this for just for the homogeneous part. Okay? So, you realize that this is difficult. So, let's look at the proof of this. Okay. So, before we go on again with the proof, let me tell you what we are doing. First of all, we started with, so we wanted to prove the homogeneous uh, wave equation, uh, initial value homogeneous wave equation. Okay. So, let me put it this way. Initial value homogeneous wave equation. Okay. We want to prove this. I mean, for that, what we did is, first of all, for n equals to 1, we, uh, I mean, did the D. Lambert's formula, okay? And after that, what we uh, are doing right now is we are using spherical means, right? 
spherical means what we are going to do with the use of, uh, with the help of spherical means we are going to reduce something called the euler poisson darbu equation clear once we do this then using that euler poisson darbu equation for n odd so let's say n equals to 3 or something we will reduce it to one dimensional wave equation solve it and then write down the uh, for problem for n equals to odd okay and then using a special technique this will define later okay technique it's not very special technique but um yeah okay fine uh we'll talk about it later so once we do that then uh, we'll talk about n even okay so you realize that uh, this is not a straight very straightforward thing to do okay so let's look at the proof of the theorem first thing first thing first so for r positive okay r positive let's look at uh, you know uh, the this thing u capital u of x r t so x is fixed that is why i am just putting a semicolon here r comma t this is given by uh, what is it yeah it is integral del b x r okay a small u y t d s y clear this is given to you now you see oh, um, um, i mean this i mean t is not doing anything here right i just want to find what u r r is right for now okay so i want to calculate what u with respect to r is so uh, you see uh, so you see but this integral is with dependent on r you remember this sort of integral we did in laplace equation right mean value theorem while proving so what we did we did a change of variable and shifted this thing to the origin okay so this became independent of r and then we took the derivative with respect to r clear you remember so we are going to do the exact same thing here so this is 1 by n alpha n r power n minus 1 okay if you just write down the average here okay alpha n is the volume of the unit sphere right okay so this times del b 0 1 if you write it like this u of x plus r z at t t s z okay i am not uh, i mean explaining every single details because we already did this calculation okay exact same calculation so i mean there is nothing but, uh, i am still doing this uh, the rebreaking the whole thing up but uh, you guys already know right it's just a change of variable i'm just changing this boundary to the unit boundary okay once i do this uh, there is r power sorry there is r power n minus 1 here okay now this r power n minus 1 that r power n minus 1 is getting cancelled there. so i will I will be left out with this n alpha n integral over del b 0 1 okay u of x plus r z okay u of x plus r z and uh, at t okay and uh, ds of z clear this is what we have yes now therefore what is u r of x r t what is it this is given by 1 by n alpha n okay integral del b 0 1 so i can take the derivative inside if i take it i can use chain rule i can write it as gradient of u evaluated at the point r z times t i mean at the point time t dot the derivative of this thing which will give you the vector z and then i have d s of z clear okay now again if i convert it back to the del b xr case what will going to happen is let me write it down yeah we can you can figure it out yourself so this is the average over xr okay and uh, del u del gamma of y t d s y okay and this is equals to <coughs> sorry this is equals to i mean del u del gamma d s y you remember this formula right this formula is essentially by gauss divergence theorem okay it is r by n will come out because of that average thing b of x r laplacian of u y t dy i hope this calculation is clear 
break it up then integral of u del u del gamma at the yt of this particular thing is basically Laplacian of u that is the definition of uh, I mean that is by Gauss divergence theorem yes okay so u r will look like this now of course this is true you see uh, that if you put uh, this is for r uh, greater than uh, 0 right now as r tends to 0 okay u r of x r comma t what do you think this uh, converges of course by looking at it you do realize that that converges to uh, i mean the, you see that converges to 0 clear that converges to 0 okay okay since u is in cm since u is in cm okay so it's a continuously differentiable it's twice continuous so laplacian u is in cm minus 2 okay so basically it's a continuous function on a ball okay boundedness uh, is there for that particular for this particular term boundedness is there okay for this term and then r goes to zero so basically the whole thing goes to zero okay now again again uh, let's do another calculation here u r r of x r t okay let's do that so what is it this calculation is uh, so I, I want to calculate this thing yeah i want to calculate this thing how do i calculate it so for doing that what i am doing is this see um, i will u r is r by n the average of this right so i will break this up and write it like this see uh, is this is what i need to find what is u r r okay so u r is r by n or r to the power n minus 1 i can write it like this right integral b x r okay let me write see yeah you see this average i am just writing it down so that is why alpha n n r power n minus 1 uh, r power n is there so that will get cancelled out that is why r power n minus 1 is there okay ball u of y t d y clear okay sorry laplacian of u yeah laplacian of u okay so the this particular thing is there now you see you multiply this r power n minus 1 here so now that implies r power n minus 1 u r equals to 1 by n alpha n integral over b x r laplacian of u y t dy clear okay once that is there now let's say let's call this thing as so call this thing as a equals to b okay now a is r power n minus 1 u r okay let's take a therefore a r huh? what is a r this is derivative of this thing clear i want to find out what u r r is i am not going to directly do that yeah what i am going to do is i am going to multiply it like this yes so this particular term if you just calculate this thing what is happening it will become n minus 1 r to your n minus 2 u r plus r power n minus 1 u r clear r r sorry r r okay and now you go, I have a URR from here. So let me write down what UR is. So specifically, everything will be written down properly. R power n minus 1 URR plus 1 minus 1 by n. Okay. Um, if you just break it up, it will become 1 by n alpha n r okay integral over b x r okay laplacian of u y t d y yes i am not doing anything but writing what u r is see u r where is it u r u r is this right so i am just writing it down because of r power uh, you see r power n minus n minus 1 is already there 
okay so that is getting converted here and r power n minus 2 times this one so that is why 1 by r clear okay now we have we have this thing right now what i am trying to say is you see this particular thing now now b a, a is done right let me do b here so it will be better so b i am defining it like 1 by n alpha n okay integral b x r laplacian of u y t d y okay so now here i am using something called a co area formula formula okay so let me write down what the formula is so it will become more easier for you to understand if you do not know the formula please uh, i mean i will ask you to uh, i mean look at the you know so the, the, this formula is essentially the polar coordinate formula so basically uh, co area formula or in some books it is also written as polar uh, coordinate formula coordinate formula okay very important formula let me write it down so basically it says that uh, i mean this is not a formula i mean you guys already know this thing see if f is continuous and summable maybe i can maybe i can write it in the next page that will be better huh let me do it in the next page eh? it's a very important formula you guys should know that so let me do it in the next page okay see the formula says that uh, i mean uh, this is the polar coordinate formula okay so co area uh, so how it's a formula to convert n dimensional integral into integral over spheres okay so the, now the question is this uh, how to convert n dimensional integral to integral over spheres over spheres okay how do you convert it so you know this formula right f is from r n to r is continuous and summable let's say continuous and summable okay summable then integral over r n clear f dx that is given by 0 to infinity integral over del b x naught r f ds dr clear so this holds for each point x naught in rn clear so basically what i am doing i want to define it in i think i discussed this thing earlier right so if you want to define integrate f over rn what you do is first of all integrate over a sphere del b xr and then run the radius of the sphere from 0 to infinity you are done right so once you have this thing now you see if you differentiate this thing oh, i mean with respect to r both sides yeah, what happens is so basically um, this is one the second part from here only okay so you uh, know for the uh, see if you change rn to b uh, x not r let's say okay then this infinity gets changed to r okay so in particular uh, this is b let's say this is x not r um, f dx if something like this happens then your integral becomes 0 to r okay and uh, integral del b x not s okay and uh, f d capital s of small something huh? let's say f z t z okay and d s clear so that is there you just change r into b 0 r so if you want to do it in a whole ball the, the full ball what you do is you do the boundary of a small ball and then take the radius towards from 0 to infinity yeah that's what so this holds for each r positive for each r positive so now if you differentiate this thing both sides d d r okay of integral b x naught r f d x if you do that then that will become integral del v x naught r okay 
f ds i think this is quite clear i mean i'm just differentiating both sides here so this is the important formula okay so yeah i'm using i'm going to use this formula huh? so i'm going to use this uh, formula what i'm going to do is this see b b is what our b in our case is ah uh, this integral laplacian of u right it is so b is 1 by n alpha n integral of uh, del b x r laplacian of u y t dy clear yeah if i want to de derive what b r is so b was given like this now what happens to br i just this remains unchanged because that's basically a constant with respect to r if i am doing this inter uh, integral you see um, oh sorry this is not over del br this is over ball right over the ball if you i mean uh, uh, by mistake i wrote it okay so you see this del del r of integral over f over b is the um, f over the boundary clear so basically this is integral over del b x r okay laplacian of u y t d s y yeah that's the only change okay now what happens is let 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 us come back to this sorry i have to write i mean you know use so many slides because the calculations are big okay a i mean I, I have u r which looks like this. I wanted to find what u r r is. I wanted to find what u r r is, right? u r is given like this. So essentially, you see, um, what I am doing is I am taking u r and I am differentiating both sides. I am multiplying by r power n minus 1, differentiating both sides. I have a, I have b. Yeah, now you put it together. Yes, this I want you guys to do it yourself. I mean, there is nothing to do here, okay? Once you put it together, what happens is therefore u r r okay so please check this part i mean there is nothing to check you just have to you know put uh, i mean interchange one line here and there so that is uh, equals to uh, the average over the sphere x r laplacian of u ds plus 1 by n minus 1 integral b x r laplacian of u dy yes okay so if you write it like this then it boils down to this this holds for any r positive okay what about r equals to 0 and similarly if you take the limit as r tends to 0 plus of course u r r of x r t what do you think happens see of course uh, i mean you see the, this particular thing and i mean as r tends to grow the, this thing goes to laplacian of u okay at the point x again minus one times this particular thing the integral also goes to laplacian of u okay yes so basically i am left out with one by n one by n laplacian of u x comma t right so you remember this sort of thing we did in laplacians also okay when we did the uh, this thing the laplace equation we did this that uh, the um, the average of uh, the f average of f over the uh, ball or uh, over the boundary of the ball as r tends to zero goes to f right f at that uh, center of the ball clear so i am using that particular trick and then we have this thing yes so now you see uh, so th th so this is a formula right this is kind of a formula for urr let's call it a uh, i don't know how did we call it it is uh, okay three is there so let's call it four four clear okay so uh, now you can use four using four one can ca calculate one can calculate u r r r and then you go on doing this thing okay what is going to happen e then so basically therefore you have capital u you can show that this is in cm of r bar 
r plus bar times 0 infinity clear why r plus see r plus of course this is for any r positive this is in cm because u r r exists u r r exists and this is continuous function right so basically it is in c2 from from 4 we are getting it is in c2 with respect to r i mean uh, right okay see u r r exists so that is why it is uh, c2 right uh, now as r tends to infinity 0 also this is a continuous function so basically the bar uh, i can take it up to the boundary okay so that is why using cm of r plus bar times 0 infinity because you can do it like this you r r r you r i mean 4 times uh, differentiable with respect to r and then m times differentiable with respect to r and that is why using cm is it clear i think it is quite easy okay now what about utt now i mean there is nothing much to do here you do realize that if uh, u u of x r t is given by integral over del b x r okay u y t d s y okay therefore u t t x r t this will be given by what do you think this is see if you take the t derivative here i can you can just take it inside i mean you don't have to worry about it because this all of this is independent the integrals is independent of t so this will be xr u t t of y t ds y clear okay now uh, what happens is when you put all of this together what is happening is now therefore you see this let's say this is 5 huh? that's your 4 this that's your 5 now putting see uh, i want to show that it solves the euler boso darbu equation right so essentially what is happening is this u t t minus u r r minus n minus 1 by r u r okay this is what L let us calculate what this is see this is u t t is del b x r u t t evaluated at y t d s y okay minus u r r times this right so let me write it down 1 by n minus 1 b x r laplacian of u y t d y minus n minus 1 by r r by n b x r laplacian of u y t d y here this is what we have i am just writing what uh, i mean this particular thing is uh, u r r i am just writing that thing okay so u r r is this thing yeah u r r is this over the ball laplacian of u plus this particular time say laplacian u over the b x r okay so this i am just uh, putting all of this together that's all okay so if you calculate this thing uh, this r and this r is gone right so i am left out with this something like this integral del b x r u t t of y t d s y okay minus so see the, this particular term this term and this term is getting cancelled right this and this term is getting cancelled okay mm, if i am right you see uh, b x r laplacian u this and this is getting cancelled okay so now uh, okay one thing i have missed i think see this part i did not write laplacian of u over del b so this is minus integral uh, del b x r laplacian of u y t d s y okay now when you put it together this term and this term is getting cancelled out so i am only left out with this and this the boundary terms so minus laplacian of u at the point y t ds y clear this is what i have 
now you see the u satisfies the problem in whole of rn right so the, this definitely holds on the this del b xr also so essentially this is going to be zero and hence uh, you know this thing is true the euler poso w equation is satisfied and also moreover i mean this you do not have to do anything it's already true that also it is clear that capital u is g and uh, um, ut that is h okay i mean that is i mean there is nothing special happening here uh, that is always true so i just put it yeah that's fine so euler poisson darby equation is satisfied that's what we i mean gather what we are trying to do here is now try to find out the solution for the initial value problem right the trick here is this so i am going to take a particular uh, thing here whatever first thing first what we are doing is this i am going to do it for so solution uh, solution for n equals to 3 okay so as i told you one odd thing one is a even one uh, so there are two once we find out what uh, euler darbo equation is now we have three two options one is to go for a odd dimension and then after that even dimension odd dimension uh, generally speaking if i just go directly it is going to be complicated okay so uh, what i am going to do is first of all do it for n equals to 3 and then do it for n equals to 2 yeah then again we will do it for a general n clear so for n equals to 3 this equation uh, is called the um, Kirchhoff's equation okay K sorry Kirchhoff formula okay I will, I will do it later um, I mean I will specify it later so uh, basically n equals to 3 I am doing huh? and um, so uh, suppose so suppose u is in uh, c2 of r3 cross uh, 0 infinity clear okay solves one one is the initial problem if you remember okay but in three dimension now let you uh, and uh, i am assuming capital u capital g and capital h are in this kind of thing huh? let me I, I don't want to write it all the time so basically you know it's already defined where is capital huh? so one and let's say this is uh, star okay so one and star these capital u capital g and capital h are defined like this yeah let, let's just assume that then what is happening okay let capital u g and h are defined defined as one and star respectively here okay mm, now what we do is you set okay u tilde to be small r times u yes g tilde is small r times capital g and h tilde is small r times capital h clear now our aim is to show that this u tilde g tilde and h tilde is very special in the sense that u t t minus u r r sorry not u u tilde this is becoming zero in r plus cross zero infinity u tilde is equals to g tilde and u t tilde is equals to h tilde on r plus cross t equals to 0 so you remember uh, understood what is happening first of all i define some u g and h with the help of u g and h i am defining u tilde g tilde and h tilde this u tilde g tilde and h tilde solves the one dimensional wave equation clear and u tilde is 0 on r equals to 0 times 
zero infinity. Now this is quite clear. U tilde is going to be zero, right? Because uh, I mean U tilde is given by R times U. U is a fixed number. I mean U U is a continuous function, right? Capital U is a continuous function. Okay, and um, so basically, uh, I mean uh, bounded continuous function. So U tilde is going to be zero in this line. It's not a issue. Okay, we just have to show this U T T tilde. I mean U tilde satisfy the wave equation. Okay, so note that u t t tilde is r u t t yeah there is nothing to do here why because u is i mean u u understood the, the, it uh, depends on i mean there is nothing t is not doing anything essentially here okay so you can just take the derivative inside and you can just push it together you, you can write u t See, u tilde if you are taking double derivative with respect to what is going to happen it r is remaining r and it is becoming capital u of tt right i mean nothing changes so you can just write it like this and that is given by r times u tt is capital u what does it satisfy if you remember capital u it satisfies the darbu poisso uh, sorry uh, the weiler uh, poisso darbu equation right so capital u satisfies this equation so u tt is u r r plus n minus 1 by r u r right so one sec uh, it is u so basically it is u r r plus n minus 1 n is 3 here so it is 2 by r u r right since u satisfies the oiler darbu poisson darbu equation okay so that is there so that is given by r capital u r r plus 2 u r right and once you write it down it becomes u plus r u r with respect to r which is u r r tilde clear clear c i mean if you take u u tilde you take with respect to r it becomes u okay and again uh, with respect to so basically you, you know um, what i'm trying to say is when you break it in all of this up this is basically u tilde of r and then with respect to r is u r r tilde this is u tilde of r right okay u tilde of r is r u u uh, r i mean if you derive, derive this thing with respect to r it is r u r plus u right so that is there and that's why it is u r r tilde clear i mean this is very easy okay also also so you see u t t tilde is u r r tilde okay ha huh? now you see g tilde of r r at the point 0 this is going to be zero so please do it yourself i mean uh, i mean there is nothing much to do of course it is zero because as r tends to zero g is going to zero and r is already there so g r r at the point zero is going to be zero okay so that is always there so now you see if you apply so this is essentially uh, i mean how do i put it uh, so okay let me do it in the next page now you see so for zero okay so you have to keep your patience here this is uh, uh, slightly uh, big uh, thing to prove that is why okay u tilde of x r t this is given by half of g tilde of r plus t minus g tilde of t minus r if you remember oh, you remember the half space we did for the, with the help of reflection method yeah for r less than t this is going to happen see the, this for, i mean we showed that u tilde uh, u tilde sorry i i showed that u tilde satisfies this equation right satisfies this equation okay now um, if u tilde satisfies this equation this equation is in a half space if you remember you see so basically i can use the reflection right i can use the reflection and using reflection uh, now i can write down using dlmr formula you know that breaking up you, you, last week what we did okay if you break it up it will look like this and then plus half okay integral 
t minus r to t plus r h tilde of y dy clear that's what we are getting okay now this c can i write it like this let me write it now can i write it like this u of x t okay this can i write it like limit r tends to 0 plus capital u tilde of x r t by r do you think i can write it like why i can do it see u of x t what is it it is limit r tends to 0 okay plus of course u of x r t you remember u of x r t is the uh, average of the on the over the sphere now if you take the limit as r tends to 0 what is going to happen that average is going to convert to small u right so that's what i just wrote and then you know you, i use the definition of capital u so i mean this thing okay now this is equals to limit r tends to 0 plus this is very i mean kind of interesting huh? uh, so this is g delta of t plus r minus g delta of t minus r by 2r minus sorry plus 1 by 2r integral t minus r to t plus r h tilde of y dy clear so if that is the case then what are you going to get from here we are going to get g tilde prime of t plus h of t okay, sorry h tilde of t right i mean of course g tilde and h tilde they are differentiable functions right i mean if you do that then essentially from here what you are going to do this is g prime at the evaluated at t right i mean that's the definition definition huh? and plus here uh, if you do it limit r tends to 0 1 so basically you are taking the average of uh, you see over this integral t minus r to t plus r what is the uh, length of the integral 1 by 2 r so you are taking limit r tends to 0 plus 1 by 2 r integral of this thing this will actually converge to h at the center of the interval which is t right so h tilde at t clear okay so we have this now what we are going to do is uh, we are going to put all of this together okay so the, hence what you have is u of x comma t u of x comma t that is this is uh, i mean i mean what can i say u of x comma t is g uh, g prime this prime is with respect to the i mean t right okay so if you just put it uh, what capital g is it is the average of small g right so this is del del t of t del b x t small g t s clear plus t times yeah because g tilde is t times g clear so that is why this t is coming and h tilde is t times integral uh, i mean the average x t h ds clear i am just using the definition i am not doing anything i am just using the definition okay so i have this now so this is your u of x t huh? let me clarify this thing a little bit more so therefore the first part huh? the integral del b x t let's see what can we do with that g of y ds of y okay if you want you can write it like this it is del b 0 1 i am not doing this calculation this has been done a lot of time you guys can handle yourself i am quite sure we just did it uh, in the beginning of the class also okay so this is this yes therefore if you take the derivative with respect to t so del del t of integral del b x t of g of y ds of y okay this if you do 
that is going to be integral over del v01 okay gradient of g x plus tz dot z dz right yes i'm i'm not doing anything but taking the i mean you know the derivative inside that's all yeah i can take the derivative inside using chain rule i have this and that will give me integral del b xt okay gradient of uh, g at thing at y z is y minus x by t okay and this is ds of y clear okay now so once i have what this is so essentially this particular thing i can write what u of x t is hence u of x t will look like integral del v x t t h of y here plus g of y i i, I am just writing everything down here okay plus gradient of g at the point y dot y minus x okay ds of y clear so this holds for x in r3 and t positive i am not doing anything but writing this see u of xt looks like this right this particular term we just calculated and this particular term i'm just putting it together and i'm just writing it like this yeah this this is t times that so that is why you know that t is gone so we have this thing this formula this let's call it uh, a uh, capital a so this formula capital a is called the kirchhoff formula okay i am not quite sure about the for you know spelling of kirchhoff by after i hope that's the spelling okay kirchhoff's formula formula uh, for uh, one clear yeah in n equals to 3 clear so uh, for n equals to 3 this is the formula please don't write it for any dimension n n equals to 1 we know that t alembert formula right n equals to 2 we don't know anything right now n equals to 3 we know that this is the formula n equals to 2 we'll do it uh, in the next part okay and then we'll do it for any n so this is a little complicated okay with this we are going to end this class